Hey guys, this is a Goofer King Science, and recently I was given this analog oscilloscope to mess around with for a while by my friend's dad. It has a bandwidth of 20 MHz, which of course isn't very high in the gigahertz age, but it's still very useful for what I do with electronics. He also had this sweep generator for me to use. A sweep generator can generate different kinds of electrical signals at different frequencies, so it's very nice for calibrating the oscilloscope or just messing around and looking at different waveforms. This sweep generator can put out square wave, triangle wave, and sine wave signals. Now if you've never used an oscilloscope before, I'll give you a basic idea of how I'm controlling it. If you look at the screen of the oscilloscope, you can see that there is a grid on it. Vertically up and down, the grid represents voltage, and left to right, horizontally, it represents time. And on the control board over there, you can see there is a volts per division switch and a time per division switch. These show how many of each unit are represented per grid mark of the oscilloscope screen. So for example, if the voltage per division switch is set to one volt per division, a signal reaching one grid mark on it would be a one volt signal. It's basically the same concept for the time per division switch. If the time per division switch was set to one microsecond, one grid division left to right would represent one microsecond of time. Well that's enough technical information, let's actually view some signals. Right now I'm connecting the oscilloscope probe to the output of the sweep generator. Right now I have the sweep generator putting out a square wave signal, and I'm trying to find it right now. And as you can see as I adjust the volts per division switch, now we're registering two lines which is the top and bottom of the square wave. But it looks like a straight DC line because we need to mess with the time per division switch to find the frequency that this is oscillating at. And now we're starting to get something, but I need to mess with the trigger level of the oscilloscope to actually, in a way, freeze frame the signal. And there we go. We've got the trigger set right, and we can see the square wave signal on the screen. If I mess with the frequency output of the sweep generator, you can see how it affects the signal on the screen. If I adjust the amplitude of the signal, you can see the peak and the bottom of the signal get further and closer apart. Now let's look at a different type of signal. I just switched the sweep generator to a triangle wave output. I really like the look of this signal. And once again, I'm messing with the amplitude of the output, as well as the frequency. And you can see how that affects the signal. Now last but not least, let's switch the signal to sine wave. Out of all of them, in my opinion, this is the most aesthetically pleasing looking signal. The sine wave outputted by this sweep generator is a very pure sine wave. If you were to look at the sine wave coming from a wall outlet or something like that, it would not be this clean. Now let's look at a practical use for the oscilloscope. I have a 555 timer integrated circuit here, running in A stable mode, which, when it's working correctly, produces a square wave. So let's hook this up to the oscilloscope and make sure it's working properly. I sped up this clip of me adjusting the settings to view the square wave, and there it is. So this circuit is working properly, however it is producing some voltage spikes. So it's nice to know about this if I were to connect this to another circuit that was not able to handle the voltage of the voltage spike, it could ruin it. So I can know about this and compensate for it in my circuitry components. Now I'm just going to probe around in some other spots in this circuit and see what signals we can find. I'm connecting to the end of this resistor here. So now all I really need to do with this to see the signal is adjust the trigger level. And there it is. Let's connect to something else. I'm going to look at the output of this 10 nanofarad capacitor. So you can see that the capacitor is charging up to a certain point and then discharging. Well thanks for watching. I hope you guys found this as interesting as I did. You'll definitely be seeing this oscilloscope in future videos. Well, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.